Balabha Giri Vada Dhari Giri Vada Dhari Jasodanandana Brajajana Randhana Jasodanandana Brajajana Randhana Jamuna Tira Vana Chadi Jamuna Tira Vana Chadi Jai Radha Madhava Kinja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kinja Bihari His divine grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Shri Prabhupada Ki, Ananta Koti Vaishnavarinda Ki, Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam Ki, Savita Bhakta Vrinda Ki, Nitai Gaur Pimanandi. All glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya to read verse 26 and we'll finish the chapter because the last two verses have no purport so we'll finish the chapter starting with 26 tasmat svastena manasa vimrisha gatim atmanaha Vaite Dhruvartha Vishrambham Jajo Pashamam Avisha Tasmat Svastena Manasa Vimrasha Gatim Atmanaha Dvaite Dhruvartha Vishrambham Jajo Pashamam Avisha Tasmat Sustaina Manasa Vimrisha Gatim Atmanaha Dvaite Dhruvartha Vishrambham Tasmat Svastena Manasa Vimrisha Gatim Atmanaha Dvaite Dhruvartha Vishrambham
series. Tasmat Swastina Manasa Vishnusham Atmanaha Dvaiti Dravarta Vishramham Tajopashamam Avisha Tasmat Swastina Manasa Vimrisha Gatim Atmanaha Dvaite Dravarta Vishrambham Jajo Pashamam Avisha Tasmat Svastina Manasa Vimrisha Gatim Atmanaha Dvaite Dravarta Vishrambham Jajo Pashamam Avisham Tasmat Therefore Svastena With a careful Manasa Mind Vishram Vish Vimrisha Considering Gatim, real position. Atmanaha, of yourself. Dvaite, in the duality. Dhruva, as permanent. Artha, object. Vishrambham, belief. Tyaja, give up. Upashamam, a peaceful condition. Avisha, take to. Translation, therefore, O King Chitraketu, carefully consider the position of the Atma. In other words, try to understand who you are whether body, mind, or soul. Consider where you have come from, where you are going after giving up this body, and why you are under the control of material lamentation. Try to understand your real position in this way, and then you'll be able to give up your unnecessary attachment you will be able to give up the belief that this material world or anything not directly in touch with service to Krishna is eternal. Thus, you will obtain peace. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The Krishna consciousness movement is factually endeavoring to bring human society to a sober condition. Because of a misdirected civilization, people are jumping in materialistic life like cats and dogs, performing all sorts of abominable sinful actions and becoming increasingly entangled. The Krishna consciousness movement includes self-realization because one is first directed by Lord Krishna to understand that one is not the body but the owner of the body. When one understands this simple fact, he can direct himself toward the goal of life. Because people are not educated in terms of the goal of life, they are working like madmen and becoming more and more attached to the material atmosphere. The misguided man accepts the material condition as everlasting. One must give up his faith in material things and give up atta attachment for them. Then one will be sober and peaceful. <laughs> and the last two verses, 27-28, the great 
sage Narada continued, my dear king, attentively, receive from me a mantra, which is most auspicious. After accepting it from me, in seven nights, you'll be able to see the Lord face to face. Woo! My dear king, last verse. In former days, Lord Shiva and the other demigods took shelter of the lotus feet of Sankarsana. Thus, they immediately got free from the illusion of duality and achieved unequaled and unsurpassed glories in spiritual life. You will very soon attain that very same position. I mean, seven days is really fast. And then thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purports of the 6th canto, 15th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam entitled The Saints Narda and Angira instruct King Chitraketu. From um, my studies of this canto, combined with my more recent studies with uh, of Brahma Samhita, um, although our acharyas don't describe six one fifteen as the Paribhasa Sutra of this chapter, it seems to me it is. Oh, maybe I'm going out on a limb. Paribhasa Sutra is um, sutra, we know. It's tight, compressed, packed message, sound vibration. And packed within it, <clears throat> within a sutra, in the case of a Paribhasa Sutra, it's the essence of, according to Jiva Goswami, in his Bhakti Sandarbha and his commentary on um, Brahma Samhita, it is uh, one verse that comes towards the beginning of a text that governs, like an emperor governs so many kings, it governs so many following unrelated, apparently unrelated statements and facts. It rules over them. They must are they are subservient to this one. And to understand any one of these things that come later, one must understand it in terms of the Paribhasa Sutra. Otherwise, you won't get the proper understanding. In Bhakti Sandarbha, he, well, excuse me, in Krishna Sandarbha, he indicates that the verse 1328 is the Paribhasa Sutra of Srimad Bhagavatam. It comes at the beginning, it rules the eight other 17,999 verses of Srimad Bhagavatam. And the, the essence of that verse is eti chanksa kalapung sang krishnas tu bhagavan swayam. Of all the incarnations just listed, chapter 3, Krishna, Bhagavan, Swayam, Krishna is the origin of them all. Although he's listed in list, he's the origin of them all. And Jiva Goswami has like volumes that go through the Sanskrit of the verse and evidences and to, to support his declaration. That's the Paribhasa Sutra. It governs the whole Srimad Bhagavatam. If one comes to any other conclusion, boo, <laughs> wrong. It must be subordinate to that verse. Krishna is the source of everything. And that's, of course, 
the absolute truth is that from which everything comes, Krishna is that from which everything comes, Krishna is the absolute truth. So whatever else was said, so many other things were said. So here's, here's one of the so many other things. And <clears throat> in, in um, other examples, just this is in case you like verses. Uh, in Nectar of Devotion, there's a verse that's the Padibhasa Sutra of that whole work. Dr. Dasamrita Sindhu. Anya vilasha trishunyam jnana karma jnana vritam anukulyena krishna nushilanam bhakti rutama. And in Sri Brahma Samhita, it's the first first, Ishwara Parama Krishna, Satchitananda Vigraha, Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karna Karnam. So, oh, it's not stated in the commentary of our Acharyas. It, 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 to me, it seems very clear that <clears throat> 6115 is the verse, because from that verse, so many things flow. That verse is Kechit Kevalaya Bhaktya Vasudeva Parayana Agham Dunbanti Karjneya Niharam Iva Bhaskaram, which means, for those of you that are not familiar with the verse, Kechit is, is a pronoun, it's referring to those who Kevalaya Bhaktya. Absolute devotion, nothing else but devotion. And then similarly, Vasudeva Parayana is kind of like an echo of that Kechit Kevalaya Bhaktya. Vasudeva Parayana, Parayana. Forget the word for word synonym, but it's there's nothing else. Nothing else. I mean, there may be so many other things, but those so many other things are connected to that one thing. That's nothing else. Just like our lives. Our lives may be, according to our psychophysical nature, whatever they are. But those, those who are in Kevala Bhakti, those so many other things are connected to one thing. Service to Krishna. Vasudeva Parayana. And by so doing, agham, sin, and even the tendency to again do such things, dunvanti, karjneya, they're, they're eradicated. The, not only the parabdha karma, that which is fructifying now, and it's like you become relieved from your immediate suffering, but those things not yet fructified, and even the tendency which is being addressed in this purport, verse and purport. Um, and the metaphor is, Iva, like sun dissipates fog at once. At once, not like slowly, at once. Similarly, Kevala Bhakti has that potency, like the sun to dissipate fog at once. And the verse just preceding that, little lesson in Sikh Canto, the verse just preceding that is what Prabhupada calls in the, in the first line of the purport, the regulative principles of knowledge. So Prabhupada, like an acharya, will do. He used certain phrases again and again and again and again, and so they gathered some meaning because he used them again and again in certain contexts. Like for us, regular principles, we all know what that is, the four regular principles, because he used it again and again. But here he's using the same phrase in relation to knowledge, regular principles of knowledge. And that verse is tapasya brahmacharjena samina demena ba chagena satyaso chapyam. So, the 
These are required if one wants to become advanced in knowledge. Samena, dhamena, control of the mind and senses. Well, King Chitraketu was having a problema. <laughs> he couldn't control his mind. And therefore he couldn't control his senses. And so he had his boohoo experience. His, you know, lamentation, and, uh, to tortured by lamentation. First not having and then having and losing. You know, the same program of everybody in the material world. Whatever it is that you don't have, you, you hanker. And whatever you have, it lasts a little while, and then it's gone and you lament. Is there something else going on? So, um, the, the regulative principles of knowledge are insufficient. According to the, the flow of those first verses of sixth canto, chapter one, it's necessary but not sufficient or insufficient. And so that's what's happening here. He's attached, so like Lakshmi was sharing after class yesterday, Angira, being a teacher, he decided, gee, this man isn't going to get Chitraketu isn't going to get teachings. He needs in something experiential. You know, like turn him upside down and shake him. Bonk him on the head. That's an experience. Woo! And then maybe he can hear. So he's, he's hearing. He's hearing transcendental knowledge. So the, the, it's not done yet either. The next chapter is the sun speaks. There's a whole other experience. He, the, the dead sun comes back to life. Narada makes that arrangement. My dear son, your, your father is boohooing over here. He's lamenting like anything. Please uh, don't cause him that misery and suffering. Bring him, come back and be his son. So the, the son sits up and Imagine what that experience was. His dead son sits up, the one who he was completely attached to. And it's, you read it carefully, he doesn't even look at his father. He looks at Narada. Why'd you bring me back? And, and who's my father anyway? Who's, who's anybody's father? In a previous life, I had another father, and before that, another father, before that. So who, which one is my father? I was with my real father and you brought me back. I'm, I'm going back. <laughs> my real father. See you later. He lies back down. Boy, that was an experience. So, it, education, you know, she'll speak later on this week, I imagine. She can elaborate on this point very nicely. But it's part of the, you know, the educational process. It's part of passing on transcendental knowledge. It's not only you got a message, you got a message in one hand and a hammer in the other hand, and you like hammer the message. So that's one way to do it. But Angira and Narada, you know, they're very flexible, and they understand the person, and they understand what the person needs to get the message, and they, so the message goes across. But I'd like to go back to the, the relationship, because the chapter begins, excuse me, the canto begins, and then the Paribhasa Sutra of the, of the canto is addressing the question. The, chapter be, the canto begins with the question, what is to be done to prevent persons from having to suffer? Well, specifically suffer the reactions of sins, but why, does, why is sin there? Well, one can say, Prabhupada says, the root cause of suffering is ignorance. So you put some knowledge to, as the antidote for the ignorance and you get no suffering. But what about the tendency to do again? Even if you know better, to do it again and do it again and do it again. So it has to be pulled out from the root. And that's, where, where does that ignorance come? It's the misuse of free will. Correct that problem, that's bhakti. 
So that's, you know, this verse 27, after the verse 26, he gives them a mantra and says, you know, it's just like a real quick verse with no purport. By this mantra, you'll see the personality of Godhead face to face in seven days. Powerful mantra. Plus, a person who's, um, whose mind has become detached from the source of misery. The source of misery is this, you know, false ego. It's a misidentification. False ego rules the material mind. One of the things I really like about Kapila Dave's teachings to Devahuti in the third canto is he, he, Kapila Dave says this process of bhakti is the only process which dissolves the material mind. Yay! What a relief. But what's the material mind? The material mind is seeing things, very simple, seeing things separate from their source, Krishna. And spiritual is see things in relation to their source. That's spiritual. So the mind is like a lens. So in, in this verse is tasmat, therefore. So it's, tasmat's a nice word. That means sit straight because it's, it's a summary verse. Pay attention, please. It's a summary verse. All the other things... Therefore, just like in Prabhupada's purports, he'll do that, you know, long purport, and then he says, therefore, so that's like, you know, that's the sutra that's summarizing all the other stuff. Therefore, tasmat, svastena manasa. So what does svastena mean? Svastena means with a careful mind. Now, how can the mind be careful if it's polluted? Answer, it can't. The mind's going to be going here and going there, going there, going there. And we go chasing the mind, thinking, oh, now I'm happy, now I'm sad, now I'm confused, now I'm feeling empty, now I'm feeling, you know, whatever different things, this and that. That's the, that's the mind that's not pure because of attachment to whatever, you know, the object of, and you know, behind the object is, I'm the enjoyer. I want to enjoy. And so we get a material mind. And if you let go of that I want to enjoy thing, independent of Krishna, then the material mind dissolves. Yay. But that's not going to happen. In other words, we'll be beaten up by the mind thinking, now I'm happy, now I'm sad. You know, in the, in, and that's in this third line, the vaite. The last line is saying, let go, Chitraketu, of this duality. You know, the duality, happiness, distress, pleasure, pain, enjoy, suffer. Let go of it. How, so when you let it's 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 a simultaneous this is knowledge that simultaneously like which comes first the chicken or the egg which comes first becoming detached or contemplating Brahman how can you contemplate Brahman if the mind is attached to duality answer you can't but you know it, it kind of it's like Prabhupada says self-realization and God realization they occur simultaneously, like the rising of the sun. So it's dark, it's night. And you, so you hold the mirror in front of yourself and you, what do you see? Darkness, you don't see anything. The sun comes up and there, oh, you can see the sun, you can see yourself, like that. Self-realization, so in the purport, Prabhupada said, within this Krishna consciousness movement, self-realization is included. He's not just talking transcendental knowledge, distinguished matter from spirit. Sankhya, that kind of Sankhya, like chapter 2. Chapter 2, Bhagavad Gita. And here, with, you know, Angira and Narada, they, they want to detach the king. Jnana and Vairagya are a couplet. 
throughout the whole of the, especially the Upanishads and the Vedas. Jnana Vairagya, Jnana Vairagya, knowledge and detachment. Well, what's the fruit of that detachment? Well, if you're in Persilis, it's, what is it? Become one. It's pervasive, this impersonalism thing. Unless there's association with devotees, that's where it goes. If one gets like, quote, spiritual. Do you remember that session that we, I remember very clearly, the session that we had when um, we had our meeting in August and you know, the, the, the GBCs had come here and we had these sessions morning and evening on different topics. And I chose, I made the schedule, so I chose to speak last. And it was the Thursday evening, and then those yoga teachers and students came. Remember that? And when it came to questions and answers, it was, it was it's, it's just a classic, you know. And the same thing that Jai Dwayta Maharaj told me, he told me a pro. He, I've heard this Prabhupada story from him 14 times, and he loves telling it. About you know the same thing they said in the class was in the final analysis, it's all one, or something like that. You know, the goal is to become one. I, you know, I didn't say what Prabhupada said. <laughs> um, well, our, 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 our teaching at Bhakti and, our, and our, our, the oneness is the oneness of love, lover and beloved, and Krishna is the beloved. And we're recognizing Krishna as the beloved. So here so far, this is just like Brahman and Jagat. You know, truth and the temporary, or, you know, the Dvaite, temporary, the duality, happy, distress, light, dark, pleasure, pain, detach oneself, dvaite, dhruva, artha, vishrambha, vishrambham is belief. Give up this belief. You know, that's like you hold in your mind the belief that this world of duality is eternal. Well, of course it's not eternal, but we hold the belief that it's eternal. We're holding on to it. Happiness. Eternal happiness. My goodness. It's silly. For, for a while, a period of time, I was serving with Naranjan Maharaj in Boston, and I think Lakshmi was there too. And I um, remember that wonderful era. And Rabindra Srupin... So Domini also came and spent some time serving there. Uh, it's very nice. And I didn't go, but a group of devotees went to, you know, one of those exhibits to see, you know, how to present Krishna consciousness. It was, I don't even know which group it was, but they told me what the experience was. It was an experience kind of thing. Um, there's a family sitting at a table. There's Fido. There's the turkey on the table you know, happy days. And, you know, they finish their meal and they get in the car and they're driving somewhere. And then, you know, it's an accident. It's night. You hear, you know, see the lights coming at. This is, you know, one of those wraparound theater things. You see the lights coming at you and screaming people in the car and the crash of the car. The lights go out. You died. And then, you know, soft classical music the light comes on, and there they are in heaven, sitting at the table with Fido and the turkey on the table. Because they were Christian. They get to be with their family. Same bodies, same dog, same turkey, same table. Huh? It's what this verse is saying, you know, that, that they, and Prabhupada is saying in, in the purport, 
due to ignorance, people think that this temporary world is eternal and it's a place of happiness and, you know, it's la-la land. And transcendental knowledge that's being passed on by the Srimad Bhagavatam is detach one from that and accept reality. So, you know, the reality of the that which is really eternal, and that's the soul is really eternal, and then comes, you know, taking shelter of the Supreme Eternal. That's the next verse. It doesn't elaborate, no purport, and it's coming up. He teaches Narada after transcendental knowledge, like same as the first chapter. After transcendental knowledge comes bhakti. Kichit kevalaya bhaktya. Then it's like Prabhupada's example, you can send a spaceship high, 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 but if it doesn't take shelter somewhere, eventually it has to come back. I remember Giri Raj Maharaj describing to me one of the first classes that he heard Srila Prabhupada speak in Boston, and it was on this topic. Then there was another one about films, and anyway, so it's, it's such a simple message that we don't get, or one doesn't get, when one is attached. You know, or, or we can even say yes, but not live our life that way. You know, hold on to the attachment, even saying we're saying yes, and hold on to the attachment. It's like one of the offenses against the chanting of the holy name. Maintaining material attachments, even after understanding, not just hearing, but understanding so many instructions in the matter. Holding on. Then you don't progress. Even you're chanting Hare Krishna and doing devotional service and Hare Bol Prabhu and all of that. It's necessary to cleanse the mind. That's this first line. The smart. Therefore, O King Chitraketu, Carefully consider the position of the Atma. In other words, try to understand who you are. <laughs> try to understand what is eternal and what isn't eternal. As Prabhupada is saying in the purport, Krishna does the same. They are doing the same. They're just following Krishna. And then, with that mind cleansed with a spiritual conception, at least theoretical. Now, what Prabhupada writes in Bhagavad Gita, 241 purport is you have to go beyond the theoretical to the practical. And he, and he says it very strongly to the point where there's not even a chance of fruitive activities in pursuit of sense gratification. That's bhakti. Then the, there's no chance when um, the tendency is uprooted. And the tendency will only be uprooted through bhakti. So that's what they give next. Narada specifically because he's the bearer of the Lord's bhakti shakti. He's a shakti vesha avatar bearing the fullness of the Lord's bhakti. But he doesn't just like drop it on his head right away. He, give, he does other things first, like Prabhupada did with us. I mean, he was giving bhakti, but we didn't recognize it. He was, he was, you know, he was bhakti personified, but people didn't recognize it. So slowly. So just the last point, the, the as with that tapasya brahmacharjina, same as Rishabh Dev teaches, this human form of life is meant for tapo devyam, not just like do things that hurt, tapasya. Live in Chicago and it hurts because it's cold. Go to Florida in the summer and it's too hot. So it's not just, you know, build a, 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 a circle of fire around you in the, in, the, in the heat of the blazing summer. Tapasya. I was visiting a, um, a, a Govinda's restaurant, one place, and they had a reading room before the Govinda's restaurant and on the, on the table were these picture books. And then, of course, then to pe get people into the books and then on the shelf was Bhagavad Gita and other things. So, picture book, 
here's a, here's a picture of yogis. So one was this literally a, this guy, a yogi. Big circle of fire, blazing fire in the, in, the, in the heat of the summer. And if you've, anyway, when you're really hot, you don't put a circle of fire around you. You get a fan or something. Or then the, then the next picture was Gangotri, with this big yogi with his beard floating on the, in ice in all directions, just like, you know, his arms outstretched. Tapasya. Then the next picture was a yogi lying on a big cactus slab. It wasn't just like little prickers, it was these big ones. Ouch. <laughs> Tapasya. According to Bhagavad Gita, that's austerity in the mode of ignorance. It's parsing the elements of the body. For what? For detachment. And you know, the little his little bowl there so people would give him money, he could maintain himself that way. Our, the, the, the teaching of Rishabh Dev is to po divyam. For the per, for whatever you do for the purpose of satisfying the Supreme, whatever it is that satisfies, so whatever it is for satisfying the Supreme. And it can be this, and it can be that, and we have our different natures, and we some like this and some like that. So we can connect our nature with what is pleasing to the Supreme, but the higher principle is what is pleasing to the Supreme, whether it's pleasing to us or not, according to our nature or not. That's when bhakti really awakens, and then that's that's the standard, by the way, of um, the purport of 6.115, as Jiva Goswami comments on that verse, that the, the standard just before spontaneous love is where one just desire service, of course, for Krishna. And then spontaneous, any, you know, anything, anything. P outpouring from the heart. So one needs to come to that position gradually. So there's these steps that are described in the Bhagavatam and in this, this story, this whole Chitraketu story is illustrating those earlier verses of chapter one, including the Kechit Kevaliya Bhaktya. And he's getting this benediction. It's no small thing. It's actually the essence. He's getting this benediction from Narada. You'll meet the Supreme Lord face to face in seven days. Ta da! So by descend descending mercy comes through such personalities. Of course, Chitraketu was, other than being attached to having a son, he was a highly qualified person. Otherwise, it wouldn't have happened so quickly. But along with Narada's benediction, it happened very quickly. So we'll hear some more next chapter about Lord Sankarshan and his beautiful form and the exchange between King Chitraketu and the Supreme Lord. Hare Krishna. Any discussion? Or questions? Yes. Yeah? Should you I, do. <laughs> why Angira gave, uh, Nardamani gave uh, Chitraketu a mantra to Lord Sankarshan instead of the, uh, Lord Krishna? Why not? Oh. He's a Sankarshan Bhakta. Okay. He says, I mean, it, it, there's no explanation of exactly why. The great sage Narada continued, My dear king, attentively receive from me a mantra which is most auspicious. Okay, next verse. My dear king, in the former days, Lord Shiva and other devotees took shelter of the lotus feet of Lord Sankarshan. Hare Krishna. Two things. One is that I was there for that exhibition it was actually an exhibition. Which one? The one with Fido and, <laughs> and the family that got in the car accident and then... Oh, you were with that group? Yeah. So uh, did I, I, I... Did I describe it properly? Yes, you did. But it was, a, it was an exhibition and it was, it was quite funny because um, somebody asked a question. There was someone there. It was, we went to a Mormon 
Mormon. thing. It was a Mormon, you know, place, and they had all these different exhibitions, and that was one of them. Okay. And so that was like at the top, the pinnacle. There it is, you know, Joe and Mary and Fido and the turkey, and they're all in the spiritual world. So <laughs> someone asked, actually a 13-year-old girl asked, um, well, the question I have is, what if they would have gotten the car accident when, like, they were 85? Would they be now sitting in their Old, 80 invalid in a rocking yeah. chair? <laughs> would they get their 85-year-old body, or did they get the body that they had when they got all smashed in the car? Or which, where does it, you know, they, they picked a 23-year-old body, which body did they get? So the lady said, that's a very good question, but I don't know the answer. I'll have to ask. And so she left, and when she came back, they threw us out. They asked us to leave. They didn't answer the question, and they just asked us to leave. <laughs> and you think, oh, glory is to Srila Prabhupada, <laughs> because they just don't have, you know, the answers. And, and they make up something so it seems very pleasant, but they really don't know anything. They're really strong values in family. Right. So strong that when you go to the good place, you're with your same family. Yeah, but you're frozen in time. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's like this idea of rising from the dead, you know, <laughs> the second coming of Christ, people that are in their grave, it's just like bones in a casket. <laughs> they're going to rise from the dead and, you know, whatever they're going to do. <laughs> it's so silly. It's just like so silly. Anyway, go ahead. Anyway, I thought I'd share that because it was really, it, it always remains with me over many years that that happening because it was so funny. I mean, it was very telling, more than funny, it was very telling. Um, th the idea of controlling the mind or getting to the point where one can control the mind, developing control of the mind, and of course we know intellectually that by engaging in devotional service, one kind of tries to override the pushings of the mind. Krishna says it can be done by constant practice and detachment, which is a whole other thing. And so we, we're hopeful. You know, we go through the process and the mind keeps bugging us and we keep overriding it and moving forward or moving or hopefully moving forward. <laughs> And, and it's, not, it's not as easy as it sounds when we talk about it, to do it. Did you notice that? <laughs> Maybe for you it's easy, okay. <laughs> but for some of us, it's not so easy. <laughs> so, and we, we often, it's like the whole existence in this body is an experiential learning thing arranged by Krishna to teach us a lot of lessons. Someone asked Borjan Prabhu once, um, how do you become humble? And Borjan said, live life. Life will make you humble. But the saints come into our lives and they try to speed up the process, hence the name accelerated learning. They try to not make us go through so many lessons, so many lives, and, and teach us quickly. But despite the lessons, we tend to learn for a short period of time and then regress. And I'm, I'm, I'm wondering why, we, why we're asked in Varnashram to enter into situations which appear to provide opportunity for developing attachment as a remedy for attachment. Does that make sense? Yes, I understand your question. Uh, it's, it's a lesser intelligent position. And for people who have less, like, you know, like Luke's not here, but the question from yesterday about, you know, hearing and you understand. Hearing you don't understand, you see and you understand. Hearing you don't understand, see you don't understand, you experience. Oh. So, it's... Best is just here. That's first class intelligence. What, what if you don't have first class intelligence? Well, we have a plan for you. <laughs> Not you. 
but you know, such persons. Hopefully wish that you can have first class intelligence if you push yourself beyond what appears to be your capacity. And well, then that's, you... That's a, that's, that's a um, surrender issue, isn't it? What, one can be empowered beyond one's limitations by Krishna's empowerment. But that takes surrender. Well, I, you know, I got one foot in this boat, one foot in that boat. I'm trying to cross the river. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jagatananda Pandit advises, don't do that. But some people do that. And so that's the Daivi Varnashram program. And yes, it's a risk. I mean, you know, for example, entering into household life. Why do it? Just everyone should be sannyas, men and women. It, it, so the, 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 there's, there's an arrangement for propensity and propensity that's sanctioned by Krishna, and that person can advance as swiftly, although there's certainly risk, as you pointed out, to become attached. Certainly there's risk to become attached. It's like um, Uttanapada and his brother Priyavrata. Priyavrata was saying, no, I don't want to become the emperor. Why? Well, I'll have to have a queen, and I'll have to have wealth, and I'll get attached. Brahma said, yes, you will get attached. But I give you the benediction. You'll become freed from that attachment. He got attached. Can you give me that benediction, please? <laughs> I'm not Lord Brahma. <laughs> Sorry, Charlie. <laughs> because it seems like the opportunity for attachment is all pervading, even oh, yeah. in sannyas. You know, it's everywhere. 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 So therefore, you know, the, 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 the formula def, by definition of Lord Chaitanya for renunciation is yukta vairagya. But you know, wait a minute, yukta vairagya, you, there's the opportunity for attachment. Utilize something, and it's not for the sake of attachment, it's, for, it's, it's like it, it ends up in attachment, unless one is very careful. And it, it, the same thing can exist in any ashram. And any varna. Like an iPad or an iPhone, right? You use it in Krishna's service and then you get attached. Or if you get attached, it can take you to hell and back in four seconds. Yeah. Right in the middle of your japa. So, you know, it, it's such a dangerous thing. And we don't have the opportunity to, to not do those things. We have to function in this world. So yeah. it's a very so, dangerous situation. It's, it's a li human life is a life of responsibility and there's no way around it. We have to be responsible. Response able. <laughs> we choose our responses. And if one wants a life where you don't choose responses, it's animal life. A human life is we choose. We choose wisely. Is there risk? You bet. Do it this way, do it that way, do it the other way. There's risk. So there's risk. So there's risk in Varnashram. There's risk in having a body. It's a risk. It's peril. We have to use it anyways. Use it responsibly. You have a question? No, 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 no. That's all. Hare Krishna. Uh, Maharaj, this is a question uh, based on yesterday's class. Okay. And um, I think you did cover a lot of it in today's class, but somehow the question is still in my head, so I just wanted to uh, get a deeper understanding. So there was a statement yesterday that the, uh, in the purport that the whole material creation is uh, is a mental concoction or something like that. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't remember. So um, I so I was I've been trying to understand that in the context of uh, you know my life as an aspiring devotee, trying to practice and all that. So um, 
we also hear the statement that devotee uh, you know relationships are eternal this you know the, the you know the uh, the relationships are eternal and and um, you know the process is eternal so uh, my question is when when i am interacting with um, you know the other devotees or maybe not my family members or the people in my life when i'm interacting um, how how do i discern between what is the mental concoction component of my of uh, whatever i'm experiencing versus what is real how do i um well unless you're on a transcendental platform it's going to be projection unless you're on the transcendental platform it's going to be projection you're going to be like this is my son this is my husband this is my father this is my sister and you know, wait till the next chapter who is my father when you know, what are these bodily relationships or you know do, do it say the other way like this exhibition at the the mormon whatever it was you know it's it's not that what is it well you know if the relationships are eternal it's not going to be you know in goloka vrindavan gorgovinda is going to be your son you'll have some there'll be some relationship but you know what's going to be krishna knows you don't unless you're on a transcendental platform so temporarily you're serving according to the relationship you know mother and son and wife and husband and etc etc sister and sister you serve accordingly according to your you know situation and that changes you're going to get older and then you'll be like you know grandma and under vrindavan you know giving ad- advice like you know like lakshmi teaching people about from the wisdom of her experience of krishna consciousness you know her children are grown up and you know so she's not got a whole bunch of other children all of us <laughs> giving krishna con- giving wisdom so you you know th- these scenarios of life will change as you know just time keeps moving those things along in the course of all of that most important is transcend transcendence is attachment goes to krishna not just like finishing your 16 rounds and putting your bead back you know attachment to krishna attachment to krishna that's the goal it doesn't happen like that it happens gradually and when there's attachment to krishna then the the transcendental dimension of relationships at least the possibility is that that becomes illumined for you until then it's i'm serving according to my duties that are suitable for my situation i'm in a woman's body i have a son i take care of my son with love and affection but it that's not eternal you know we heard it in this chapter we hear it again so so the my conception changes about the people yes. around me that's what is yes. a shift yes the spiritual conception starts to emerge and the material conception starts to fade it doesn't mean you you know then you become negligent it means you see the transcendental nature while you're doing your worldly duties and you know it it, it, it directly it's proportionate to the attachment to krishna well we you know we're not there yet we're doing the practice part to we get to that stage dana kelly has something <clears throat> just as a follow up to lakshmi moni's question Um so you were mentioning that first class intelligence second third fourth class yeah. intelligence yeah that why would somebody choose a varna or an ashram or whatever situation in life that involves more risk of attachment material attachment that that would be a signal that that person's of lesser no. quality intelligence no 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 i don't i don't i i if if that came out of you know it seemed to be implied No. That's not what I meant to say. We 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 have our nature. 
And it's intelligent to act according to your nature. And my, if my nature is, I am, I, you know, if I tried to be a householder, I'd be a big flop. And if someone that's a householder tried to be a sannyasi, they'd be a big flop. It wouldn't be intelligent. One should act according to one's nature. And then it's, you know, the, the, the activity will, so, but both require the hearing. If I, if I take up the position of being a householder and my hearing is not strong, I'll be a flop. And if I take up the position of a sannyasi, I'm detached and I don't properly engage myself in hearing, I'll be a flop. So, it, it, you know, the, the, the first class intelligence doesn't mean, you know, it doesn't mean the, the negation part. It's what's, what's my situation, what's appropriate for me. That's first class intelligence, by hearing. Okay, Karuna Nidhi, last question. Uh, Maharaj said, uh, I could not understand the last line of translation. What? Last line of the translation. Last line of the translation. Yeah, that Prabhupada wrote, is eternal. That word refers to what? Which, which, which word? Is eternal. Prabhupada wrote, is eternal in that sentence. What's eternal? Let's read the sentence. Yeah. You. <clears throat> well, let's go back. Try to understand your real position in this way, and then you'll be able to give up your unnecessary attachment. Jnana vairagya. You will also be able to give up the belief, that's this word, vishrambham. Yeah? Vishrambham. Give up your belief that this material world, or anything not directly in touch with service to Krishna is eternal. It's a belief. I, do you want to know the explanation? What does it mean? It's the belief that asat is sat. You know, this is my wife. These, this is my child. This is eternal. Like, you know, the, the thing, the Mormon exhibition. Or, like this other example, it's just like, it's really funny. Or, as you say, telling. And the second coming of Christ, all those people that are Christian, and they're, you know, bones in a casket, they're going to rise from the dead. And, you know, celebrate. Eternal life. When the second coming of Christ. Then that's a nice question, though, know, supposing somebody dies when they're 85. So that's like, they're going to be 85 forever? And then someone that dies when they're 15, they're going to be 15 forever? And it's so many other irrational things. It's so many. So that's the, 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 the vishram bham, the belief that the temporary is eternal. When that shelter is taken, shelter in Brahman, or transcendence, the mind is then freed from those misconceptions or the, the, that belief that the temporary is eternal. Haribo, Srila Prabhupada, Keep Jai. Yeah.